Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Amazon Fire TV Stick. This is probably the most affordable streaming box you can buy at the moment. $39 to make your dumb television a smart one. And it's pretty simple to install. It just pops into the back of your television's HDMI port here. They have an extension cable with it as well in case it doesn't fit back there. You plug some power into the USB port and you've got uh, most of the major streaming video apps delivered to your television for a very affordable price. Now this is the new version of the product that adds some additional horsepower to the chip inside of it. So it's a little faster for games and whatnot. Uh, and they've also added voice remote capabilities with Alexa. So you can get a lot of the Alexa services like uh, being able to check the weather or turn your lights on as we'll do in a few minutes with it as well so a pretty nice update on this product and again very affordable so we'll step through all the things it can do here in just a second I do want to mention though in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this with my own funds so all the opinions you're about to hear are my own no one is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted all right so I got everything hooked up right now the stick is connected to a splitter with its extension cable but normally this would be tucked behind your television set it's powered by a USB cable you could probably get enough power from your television's USB port. Uh, if you have an older TV without them or it doesn't provide enough power, uh, they do give you an AC adapter in the box with about a six foot cable. So you shouldn't have an issue getting it uh, connected up to your television set. It's got a quad core processor. They don't say what kind of quad core processor it is, but uh, you can bet on it being a very low end processor, but it is capable enough to do basic video streaming, which this does exceptionally well, as well as play some games too. Eight gigabytes of storage and one gigabyte of RAM. Max Maximum display output is 1080p. Now, because this is an Amazon device, uh, they will steer you towards Amazon content as often as they can. So as you scroll through here, the first thing you'll see are your Prime Originals. And what's nice about the Prime service is that if you are a Prime subscriber already, you get all this content for free. And there's actually a lot of good stuff on there, including some HBO shows here, as you can see. So I think uh, Veep here is on there, as well as some older HBO shows like Rome and many others. Amazon has their own content, and they also have a bunch of content that they've licensed from other folks as well. And my daughter watches a lot of kids stuff on Amazon Video now because they do have a really good kids library too. So if you are a Prime subscriber, uh, you'll get a lot of great stuff uh, for free essentially for uh, purchasing this box and using Amazon Video services. Of course, you can also buy uh, other content through Amazon as well. So they're really going to steer you towards those things quite a bit. I'm very impressed though by how fast everything springs to life. So what they often do is kind of pre-cache things in anticipation of you actually hitting the button. So because I'm hovered over this season one, episode one of Goliath here, uh, when I hit the button, it does come up pretty quickly here. So this video is already playing, even though it's a still frame here, uh, you can see the video is advancing here and it's already uh, ready to go with, uh, with content for us. So I've been very pleased with just how responsive it feels. There is times when the menu gets a little laggy, but uh, by and large for watching stuff, which I think is what most people wish to do with this device, uh, it really does quite nicely. There are other apps available on here as well. So you have uh, HBO Go here, for example. I've got Netflix booted up on here already too, and uh, things do uh, spring to life very quickly in those apps as well. So we'll cut back to my other screen here. I think I've got an episode of Star Trek currently running, so we'll pop that open and see uh, how that goes. I should note that this has wireless AC built in. However, I've had a very hard time getting it connected to my AC wireless network. So I think there might be a firmware update that might correct that. I have multiple access points in my house, so I wasn't able to get uh, the device connected to the faster Wi-Fi. It does support the slower 2.4 gigahertz standard. And as you can see here, it really isn't impacting things all too much. And Netflix uh, seems to work pretty effectively. HBO Go is on here, a number of other apps as well. I think they have a full list on the uh, Amazon website, which I will link to below. Now, YouTube is a little different on here because uh, YouTube and Google are kind of a competitor to Amazon, so they don't have an official YouTube app. But what they've done is built a YouTube interface to their lean back experience. So what's going to happen here is it kind of pulls up a uh, web page. It doesn't look like a web page, but it is actually the YouTube web interface that uh, is uh, uh, formatted for a full screen TV. TV experience. So it does look a lot like an app, but uh, you will not get 1080p 60 content from YouTube uh, on this device as you're scrolling around with it. So just be advised for that. It won't feel as uh, smooth as a native app might, but uh, you are able to pretty quickly get your YouTube content up and running on here as well. The box does support uh, the digital audio standards, so some of them. Uh, so Dolby Digital does work on this, but none of the higher end standards like DTS HD or Dolby True HD, which a lot of home theater enthusiasts want. But on Netflix and Amazon and other services that do support uh, digital surround sound, this device will work with your home theater receiver. Now they have integrated voice search and Alexa services into the box here. So I can do some universal searching like this. Star Trek The Next Generation. 
and what it will do is pull up a, a couple of things that it thought I said. Sometimes it just brings you right to the result. And as you can see here, we've got Star Trek up now. And if I uh, click on the episode, it is going to drive me into Amazon services. So you can get over to other services. If you go to the more ways to watch option here, it'll pull up Netflix and uh, Hulu as well. But again, they're always trying to steer you into the Amazon ecosystem. But there's more that you can do with this. So I can do some shopping. Show me some good deals on paper towels. And what it will do here is pull up a search result from, uh, of course, Amazon, and will give me the recommended brawny paper towels here if I want to buy those. It also does things like, show me the weather this week. And hopefully it should pull up a result for that. So there you go. So you've got some of those capabilities. And because it integrates with Alexa, if you are using Alexa services on other devices from Amazon, uh, you can also use them on here without any additional configuration. So I have a Hue system on my network here. I can just say, turn on the studio lights. And that lamp should turn on here in just a second. There we go. And I can also have it do something like this. Turn the studio lights down 50%. And it should dim the lights for us now after I say that. So very much a Star Trek-like experience. You do have to hold down the button on this device to do that. But if you've used Alexa or are using Alexa on other services, most of those things should work here as well. And one thing this does very well is play games, surprisingly so. So a lot of the casual games, things like this Sonic CD remake, really do well on uh, this platform, given what this little device has for horsepower. Now, when things start happening in the background, like app updates and everything else, uh, you may not get the best experience. But I found, by and large, the uh, speed of the device to be really decent enough to run a lot of fun games. And again, if you are a casual gamer, uh, this is probably going to be a very good casual gaming experience for you. And there is going to be a lot of stuff to choose from that isn't all that expensive. Uh, the one gripe I have, though, is that Amazon has this great underground app store for uh, Android devices, but they don't offer you those same apps on their TV platform. Those apps are free on the underground platform for phones, uh, not so on their TV devices, unfortunately. So you will be finding yourself paying for uh, more games on your uh, TV device than you might on your phone, but uh, that's probably how they are modeling their business here. But as you can see, Sonic is running pretty well. My other issue, though, is with the game controllers. So I am finding that even if your controller says it's compatible with Android, it's not going to work. I have three or four different Android-compatible Bluetooth game controllers that I tried to connect up with this stick. The only one that worked was this third-party controller I got a couple of years ago uh, from Nyko, which does work with it because it was designed for Amazon Fire TV boxes. Uh, so you will probably need to invest in the Amazon controller for it to work. I really tried every Android controller I had in the house. Uh, this was the only one that works. They don't make this anymore, but Amazon does sell their own controllers on their store. And I think those controllers probably cost as much as the stick does. And even some more demanding games here like Grand Theft Auto Vice City seem to run pretty nicely on this box as well. So for $39, you really uh, get a pretty decent little gaming box here, even if you do have to invest uh, probably the cost of the stick in getting a, a game controller that's compatible with it. But it does uh, seem to do pretty well with games, much better than the prior version of the stick did. The big thing, though, to keep in mind is that when you buy a game on Amazon, you're not getting the Google Play version of that game. So if you have bought games on your phone through Google Play, those games will not be accessible to you on here. Even though this is running a version of Android just like your phone does, Amazon has their own store separate from Google. So all of your Google purchases do not come over to the stick. So you just want to keep that in mind that you might have to buy some things again if you want to run them on this device. All right, so now we're going to get into a geekier part of the review here, if we're not geeky enough already, because this also works with the Moonlight PC game streaming app. So I'm running uh, the infamous No Man's Sky on my gaming PC in the other room, and we're streaming it over my wireless network uh, to the Fire TV stick here, and it seems to be running pretty nicely. Now, one thing to note is that uh, the Fire TV stick here is uh, limited to 30 frames per second on its H.264 uh, decoder, which it's using basically to get the video signal from the gaming PC here. So you will uh, not get a 60 frames per second experience, but you'll get a playable PC gaming experience as a little extension box here uh, for about $39 in addition to getting all of your other uh, media playback as well. So not too bad of an experience here and uh, certainly unexpected. That Moonlight app is available in the uh, Amazon App Store as well for free. I've covered that app in the past, so definitely check out my playlist link below so you can see how it works. Very versatile app and runs pretty nicely on here. And you'll see too when we quit the game uh, that the latency isn't all that bad either. So we'll get a little latency report here when we quit, about 11 milliseconds, so very quick actually, faster than the Mi Box we looked at just recently, uh, which is a low-cost Android TV box. So it really does very, very well here with Moonlight, better than I expected it would do. 
And one of the things that I was pleased to see is that Amazon has knocked down at least a few of the barriers that were making it hard to sideload applications onto this device. So this is running Android, and that means you can download Android apps directly from the developers of those apps and install them even if they're not on the Amazon Fire Store. The problem has been in the past that it was a lot of menus you had to dig through, you had to run stuff on your computer, it wasn't easy to get these apps up and running. Uh, they have made it a lot easier because now those apps, after they're run at least once, uh, will show up on your app library, which is great. And I'm going to do a separate video in my Extras channel uh, showing you how I use the ES File Explorer here that I got from the Amazon store to make that process easier. I'm also going to plug a viewer's website, AFTV News. I'll put a link down below in the video description to that website. It is composed and written by a viewer of the channel, Elias Saba, who does a lot of content just on these Fire TV boxes, and he's got a lot of great tips for hacking into them and making them uh, bend to your will. He's done a great job with that site, and I want you all to check it out if you are interested in that. All right, so let's take a look at Cody and see how well it might be able to play back a Blu-ray MKV file. We're running the uh, SPMC fork of Cody, which is what I really love to run on these Android TV boxes. So I'll click on the uh, Ghostbusters MKV file here, and this is the full Blu-ray movie that I uh, took off a disc that I have upstairs and it does start up pretty well it does start to play okay but you'll often get this buffering going on and there's a few reasons for that uh, one is that it's not a very powerful device to begin with uh, the other reason is that for whatever reason it will not connect with my AC network here in the house even though it supports it so I think if we had uh, better wireless connectivity to the box right now I would probably see better performance but this is not going to be something I'm going to recommend to home theater enthusiasts with very large bitrate files uh, like these Blu-rays. Again, I think sticking to the uh, basic consumer stuff uh, will be a better experience. But it does work fine with Plex. Plex is available in the Amazon App Store, so you shouldn't have any problems finding that. Uh, so you can see what it looks like here on the uh, device here when it boots up. One thing you'll also notice is that because you only have a gigabyte of RAM in here that the apps often have to reload. So you're not going to often see a very quick switch from one app to the other uh, based on that issue. But uh, here's the interface here. We can maybe spin up the uh, Star Wars movie I was watching earlier on a prior video and uh, see how well this does. Now what will happen is because I'm running Plex, Plex will transcode the video into something that uh, this device can play back. So my little Plex server in the other room will uh, process that file, make it into something smaller than the Blu-ray file that it's playing from, and that should give us a better experience here on our Fire TV stick. And again, because it supports Dolby Digital, if your Blu-ray file has Dolby Digital embedded in it, uh, it should play back just fine. So let's let this queue up here, and we'll see how well the video is once it starts playing. All right, so here we go. It just took a second for it to spin up on my server there, but now it's playing back, uh, again, transcoded to a uh, better account for the bandwidth we have going into it, as well as its limited processor. So you shouldn't have any problems playing back Plex Media on this device. So that is the Amazon Fire TV Stick, and I think it's probably the best value you're going to get uh, for playing back content on your HD television. For $39, you get a lot of capability here for not a lot of money. It doesn't do 60 frames per second content, it doesn't do 4K, but I think for a lot of consumers who have a basic HD television and lack the ability to play back some of the streaming content, uh, this device will get you there. You'll definitely want to check on Amazon's website to make sure that your favorite streaming app is there and compatible, but I think for a lot of folks who are using Netflix or Amazon Prime Video Services, you'll be pleased with that. The gaming is actually better than I expected on there as well. A lot of great casual games, even Shovel Knight is on there. Uh, you will need to invest in a game controller, which will probably double your price, but uh, that's to be expected in this day and age when computing devices have gotten so inexpensive. My only caution is that I was not able to get it to connect to my AC wireless network. I think it's based on how I have it configured. I've got multiple access points that allow my devices to roam between them, and for whatever reason, uh, this one just isn't talking to them at the moment. So I'm going to keep an eye on this to see if maybe there's a firmware upgrade in the future that improves that. But I would just caution you to very quickly get it out of the box and test it because if it doesn't work with your network, uh, you should be able to return it to Amazon. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.